So whilst on paper, Stable Diffusion requires a graphics card with eight gigabytes of VRAM, you can actually, in practice, try to run it with less than that. And there are a number of techniques for, the, for doing that that you might want to test on your system if you have less than eight gigabytes of VRAM. We've looked at X formers. So this is the web ui-user.bat file, which we used in installing Stable Diffusion in a different video. We've moved on now to a situation where we've got slight uh, adjustments. You've got echo on. I, th that's an adjustment that I made from echo off. It just means that these commands print as they're being processed inside of the command command prompt. And um, yeah, I just prefer to see things sometimes as, as stable diffusion is, is starting up. Uh, you'll notice as well, Xformers has not, this is the one that we put in here in the command line uh, arguments. This guy will install Xformers. It's going to run Xformers each time that we run Stable Diffusion. It reduces the amount of time, but also can reduce the amount of memory required by, uh, by Stable Diffusion. So it is beneficial in that sense. It can reduce time and memory requirements. Uh, you'll notice that there aren't any quotation marks around Xformers. That's because inside of Windows, I find that you don't always need to put those quotation marks. Sometimes it's just a little bit easier to see what's happening without quotation marks. Let's go to the command line arguments and type in dash dash med VRAM. Now, if you have less than eight gigs of VRAM, typing this in, saving it and restarting stable diffusion will allow it to run with less memory. So if you're having problems with memory, insufficient memory uh, errors, trying this will let it run slower, but with less memory. Uh, it breaks down the processes in such a way that they take longer to run, but they use less memory, less VRAM. They use overall, I think, as much memory, but I think they start using system RAM. Now, instead of this one, which doesn't hurt performance too much, there's another one that we can try, which is dash dash low VRAM. Now again, would we'll save this restart stable diffusion. And what would happen if we had this there is that it would, it would run a lot slower. So there'll be a devastating impact on performance, but it would run with low VRAM. How low? We don't really know. I've heard four gigabytes is possible with automatic 1111. Okay. So those are two ways of running with less VRAM. Xformers will increase performance. The med VRAM and low VRAM will reduce performance. Let me delete this here so that, uh, and save the file so that it doesn't actually save and run next time. Uh, and that's because uh, I don't wanna run that because it slows things down. You should only really use low VRAM in really extreme situations where you absolutely need to use it. I'm just going to delete a few lines and for a bit of fun, we can see something here. We've got some remarks. So inside of Windows, if you put two semicolons before some text, it actually doesn't read those when it's running the file. So that's a simple way of commenting out some of the stuff inside the file so that it doesn't run each and every time. Let's save that and take a look at another technique for reducing the amount of VRAM required. And here we are with some images that I created before. This one was created using Xformers. And there's a, there's a small disadvantage with Xformers, which is that although it runs faster with less memory, it can from run to run change the way images render. So if you, I think, let me see. Yeah, there, this is done with Xformers. These are six images and the six images are exactly, they're done with exactly the same parameters, nothing changed. So from one run, we have this image, next run, slightly different image. And that's just Xformers, that's how it works. You have to accept a bit of variation in how it renders. Notice that some of the images don't seem to change at all. When we start using merge tokens, which is something which is built in to Stable Diffusion, if you have the latest version of Stable Diffusion, you'll have merge tokens. It is different. I, I did the these six images using merge tokens cranked up to the maximum and the results were very different. 
you can see with this one, we actually lose a person. What's happening? So with merge tokens, it is designed to introduce some changes, but it does speed things up. But what I found with these six images was that although this one's much more detailed, this one's a lot less detailed, it took just 10 seconds less every time. It took about one minute, 10 seconds to get this, about one minute, 20 to get that. What's going on? I think what was happening was that I had basically chosen settings where I wasn't going to see much improvement with the new merge tokens. Did a bit of extra research and what they suggest is it works best when you're dealing with large images and it also works best when Xformers is not operating. So I turned off Xformers and then worked with a larger image and let's see what we got. I decided to test uh, merge tokens using stable diffusion running at 1280 by 720. Very complex, very, very complex pro uh, prompt, which was designed to test how the system responded. So we have large images. We've got a prompt which just tries to get the software showing us something that's going to be a little bit striking, a little bit unusual, uh, w w running with merge tokens turned on and running without uh, X formers as well, so that we could just test the performance of X formers against the merge prompt. Uh, and what we're trying to do is to get it to produce images like this, where there's a kind of interaction between the, 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 the person, another version of the person, we've got some kind of uh, mirror or some kind of window and it looks as though there's an interaction taking place where it's almost as though they're coming out of the uh, out of the out of the mirror. That was the idea. It was something creative, and it required very very careful prompting. Now the idea was to see which ran with the lowest memory requirements, but also to see which ran fastest. So at um, twelve eighty by seven twenty, and using just X formers, we were getting about 1.15 iterations per second. And that meant we took three minutes and 49 seconds to do all six, uh, all six renders. And for the most part, I think the outcome was pretty good. It's kind of the stuff that I expected uh, in terms of the, the quality of the output. I'm pretty satisfied with Xformers. And um, yeah, I think that's gonna be the standard. So for the total amount of time taken without Xformers and without token merging, we got results uh, of six minutes and 41 seconds. And the overall appearance was very similar to the appearance of the Xformers uh, with some slight differences in the appearance. So with uh, token merging set to 60%, we got results that were familiar, but somewhat more flat, less dynamic than the other ones that we got. Uh, this is a good example. You've got a guy's hand holding, it looks like a sort of flat, kind of a flat monitor, screen, mirror, some kind of device. The, 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 the fingers and the hands were fine. I spent a bit of time prompting uh, good quality hands and fingers. Here, another great example. So with the token merging, you can see that we've got this odd plant coming out of the, the, the mirror. So the prompt included beautiful mirror, beautiful framed mirror, which is also a portal to a different dimension. So you can see the girl kind of coming out of the mirror. That's fine. That's a portal to a different dimension. This plant here, I didn't ask for. I asked for ivy. Uh, and some of the other ones, they put ivy there, but they also put this plant, this kind of fur plant. It was also there. I don't know where it came from, but it, it this doesn't look quite as beautiful as I had envisaged. Her eyes look a little bit wonky. That's not a consequence of token merging. That's a consequence of something within the model that I'm using. And overall, I found token merging. Th th this is an example with X formers, same seed. You've got this beautiful ivy. Things are a little bit more coherent. The colors, that was the other thing I noticed with the colors here, the colors are much more vibrant, a little bit more muted here. That change in color took a number of renders to discover. The colors were more flat with token merging. And that was probably the most noticeable thing uh, out of all the uh, things that I noticed. 
Now to turn on token merging, you go from text to, Im text to image up to settings, which is uh, a separate tab. Then you look for optimizations and in optimizations, we have the token merging here. So we can start from disabled. We can go all the way up to 0 0.9, which is the highest. Um, and uh, it's a good idea to experiment with some of the ones in the middle. Uh, there are also other t token merging options here as well for other purposes. Once you're decided, you can hit apply settings. It will confirm the setting and there you are ready to go with token merging.